I, I have a word for you from the Lord. You know, I kept struggling last night. I had to reach out to a friend. I said, can you pray along with me? Because, I, you know, so many things in my heart, so many words. What exactly do you want me to bring, Lord? And God gave me a word. And my iPad refused to show my, I'm going to depend on the slide. Can we have the scripture, please? on the screen I like to begin to read that's not the first one okay Isaiah chapter 40 I'm speaking about strength in adversity strength in adversity adversity will come against each and every one of us what God promised us is sometimes I'll drive the adversity away, but sometimes I just need you to be strong in the time of adversity. Adversity means different things to different people listening to me. Adversity can be a financial difficulty. Adversity can be a health challenge. Adversity can mean different things, Mar marital issues and stuff like that. But we will always at one time or the other in our lives be faced with adversity but this morning God wants me to share with us how can I be strong in the midst of adversity when it's not going away when it's there right before me how can I be strong and Isaiah chapter 40 this is God speaking uh, verse 28 Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Is there anybody here who is weary? Is anyone, anyone here who is weak? God says he will give strength to the weary and he will increase the power he will increase the power of the weak even youth that are known to be strong sometimes when adversity hits your physical strength abates King James language <laughs> have you ever been where all your education doesn't amount to anything. All your learning disappears in your like. Okay, I'm going to be honest here. Can I be honest? Hello? Can I be honest? <laughs> Pastor, you haven't changed. <laughs> I got into Preston. And the very first day, I went with Attleston. And Pastor Aaron was with us, and we were doing some filming. I was trying to do some filming. And as we went around the city, this was in January, the, the weight of the decision I've taken came on me. And then I realized, oh dear. <laughs> Anybody ever obeyed God? And you are like, I will obey God. I will do what God says. And you take the first step, then you realize, oh no. <laughs> you know, if you're alone, it's easy to handle. But when you've got a wife and a son, and you've got a church like this that I've sent you for, people have prayed, giving you gifts, you can't go to pastor and say, uh, pastor, can we go back on that thing I talked about? <laughs> These are things you may never hear some ministers tell you, and you think we are iron men. No. Sometimes we can be weak. Sometimes we can be faced with doubt. Sometimes we can be faced with fear. But we are talking about strength in the midst of adversity. 
And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, get men who know how to pray and go out into the city. So I got two people. They came to me and said, we want to join you. I said, I'm going praying, prayer walking on Saturday night. Two people immediately said, we'll go with you. So we started prayer walking. And as we were prayer walking, you know, I came here for a Tiki event, didn't I? Came for a Tiki event. And uh, Ida saw me. Where's Ida? Ida saw me. He said, Pastor, you're looking very lean now. <laughs> now you know the secret. I told you I was going to gym. It's part of it. <laughs> but the prayer walking for two hours, you get lean. <laughs> Anybody struggling with weight loss, go prayer walking. It will help. <laughs> Went prayer walking. And walking in the midst of people puffing cigarette or whatever it is, weed. Looking at people's eyes who are not here, they are in the spirit. <laughs> Talking to prostitutes on the street. The very first night we finished prayer walking. As we were finishing, we held our hands, finished our, pray, our final prayer. A lady walked straight to us. We put the video on Instagram. A lady walked to us and said, I've been looking for God. And we said, well, we are here to tell you about God. And that was the very first sign God gave us that he wanted us in the city. Led her to Christ. It's there on my Instagram page. You know, God is faithful. Strength in the midst of adversity. Show me the slide of uh, Jerusalem being on the siege. Jerusalem besieged. Isaiah chapter 40 was written in the time of great distress and adversity to the nation of Israel. The Assyrian king had overcame the whole northern kingdom, overcame all the ten tribes, overcame all the lands around, was actually the main force on earth at that time. And then they had these two tiny tribes left and overcame some of the surrounding towns. And what was left was Jerusalem with its fortified wall. And the king Sennacherib said, this is easy, we can, overcome, we can overcome this. And he laid siege on Jerusalem. But I'll show you something. Uh, what's that scripture now? That's back up, uh, give me that slide where God declared. Can I have the slide? I, I can't get on my iPad at the moment. Yeah. God gave them the victory because God said he will not enter the city. This city will not be breached. Isaiah began to prophesy. The enemy surrounded. You know that song we sing, I'm surrounded. But what the enemy didn't realize that, uh oh, you're not the only one surrounding the city. <laughs> greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world surrounded Jerusalem but there was a host of the army of the Lord Mags was talking about an angel talking about three angels in my lifetime Mags I've seen people but I can tell you Mags they are angels they are not men they are not women because the Bible says, be careful how you entertain strangers because many entertain angels unaware. And you know, we need to be conscious of the help we've got. That we've got help. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Listen, when your time has not come, your time has not come. But until that time, he surrounds me with his power and with his glory. You know, in the night time, God said, this city will not be breached. 
And Isaiah prophesied this city will not be breached. And that's why God was saying to them, have you not heard and have you not known? You know, there are people who are terrified because of Brexit. Okay? Thank God for Brexit, whether it happens or not. You know something that never changes? Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. I am the Lord and I change not. The same God who was then is the same God now. Fear not. Fear not. Pastor Paul is aware of times in my life when I had visa issues. And you know, there was a time when I could have had to go back to Nigeria to reapply to come back in. I was supposed to apply in September. In July, the Home Office changed the regulation that people in my category don't need to travel out. Because the Lord said to me, you won't have to travel out. When God speaks to you, he can move the nation on your behalf. Somebody says coincidence. Yes, that happens each time you pray. <laughs> That's why people say you are blessed. That's why people say God is partial. That's why God, pe people say God favors you. Because you pray, because you trust in him. The same accident that kills others, you get a bruise and come out of it. Okay? Say, I know the Lord in whom I serve. Come on, say it. I know the Lord in whom I serve. I know the God that I serve. I know him. I know him. The army surrounded Israel. It's there in history. Check Wikipedia. Check it. It's there. Actually, other, trans, other, other reports says for some reason, king of Assyria decided to leave Jerusalem alone. But we know the reason. The Bible says that same night... <laughs> Say with me that same night. I can preach on this for two hours. That same night. Uh, you're not listening to me. That same night. Give me five minutes. I said that same night. Come on, church. That same night. You know, you know, God sometimes chooses to fold his legs and just watch the enemy do stuff until he's ready and when he's ready it becomes that same night <laughs> you, you know when God wants to do something he says that's why he says have you not heard have you not known about me you know about the government you know about the financial crisis you know about the depression you know about the repression what has he said that's what you need what he says that same night <laughs> the Bible says he sent an angel I was speaking to somebody recently and he said, Pastor, you need to check whether you've got an archangel or just an angel. In my heart, I said, I don't really care whether it's arc, semi-arc, full arc. I don't even need to see my angels, hello? I just need to have them to work for me. Ever since, have you ever seen radio waves before? You don't care as long as it works. Sometimes we bother with theological things. At the angels, six feet, 12 feet, 14 feet, 60 feet, who cares? Just walk. <laughs> I 
It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you.